Now, let's start with the first um, guest in our talk show. Um, we will like to introduce them to you uh, after one another. And we'll start with uh, Mirna Funk. She is a journalist and novelist. She studied philosophy and history at Humboldt University in Berlin. She lives in Berlin and in uh, Israel, in Tel Aviv, and she has published her second novel this year. Mirna, welcome to our talk show. And for the first question, I mentioned you live in Israel and in Germany. Where do we find you uh, at the moment? Well, at the moment, uh, due to COVID, you find me in Berlin. <laughs> yeah. But it, I hope it will change again. <laughs> Maybe Israel would be the better place. You can, as, as right now it would be the better place, but I am uh, not an Israeli citizen. Therefore, I can't enter the country yet. So we were have to wait like you have to wait like all, all of us. Um, Mina, tell us a little bit about your work. I said you work as a journalist. Um, you, you do writing for, for different magazines and, and newspapers. What are the topics you usually deal with as a journalist? Mm, I would say I write about um, I write about Jewish life. I have a column for uh, Vogue Germany um, for now, I think nearly three years. Um, I as well write about any kind of like cultural topics as well as like female topics. Um, so uh, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, and we could see you in the German television program last week in a talk show, the first Jew, one of uh, some Jewish talk shows on German television now. Yes. And as I mentioned, you published your, your second novel um, this year. Um, German title is Zwischen Du und Ich, could be translated between you and I. Um, tell us a little bit about this novel and especially the title. So this novel deals basically with uh, transgenerational trauma um, and uh, it takes place in Berlin and in Tel Aviv, uh, it circles around two protagonists and um, that have dealt with transgenerational trauma and uh, like real trauma done in their, in their own biography. Um, and the title reflects on um, the Jewish philosopher Martin Buber's uh, very famous book, um, uh, I and You. And um, it, uh, it basically, the novel questions uh, and, and asks, um, how can, can we see and how can we see the other as the other? How can we recognize a person as a subject without objectifying uh, the person and um, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, so uh, thank you for that. We will come back to you just in a second, Mina. Thank and um, I have to uh, just got from the technician that all the participants in our talk show should please switch on their camera now so that we can um, see you then as well. And now let's switch it from one author to another. In Hungary, we are joined by Linda Veroban. Linda is a writer, Rebetzin, and Jewish educator. Um, Linda, compared to Mirna, you are writing books for young families and, and children about Jewish traditions and identity. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your work and your books? That, who, what are they dealing with? Hello, uh, welcome everyone. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm writing books, but uh, definitely not novels. They are educational books, mostly family and children books kind of combined. And my goal is like, I work uh, in informal Jewish education. So writing books is only a small, like a part of my, my project and work. And uh, I would say that my, my work is to, to help to build positive Jewish identity to, to, to the new generation, to, to the parents and to, to children. Uh, very shortly, like summarized, I would say it means that uh, they, I, their identity shouldn't be based on the Holocaust and anti-Semitism, which is uh, right now is the still uh, is the situation that most Hungarian Jews identify themselves as Jews because their families uh, were affected by the Holocaust and because they feel targeted by anti-Semitism. 
So mm. these two factors are not really attractive to, to, <laughs> to say that, oh, I just can't wait to be more Jewish. Uh, so my, my goal is to, to show them the positive identity and the positive part of being Jewish through uh, positive community experiences, education for the children. Uh, we do like camps and, uh, and activities that really give them uh, the, the feeling that they belong to the Jewish community. They can contribute to this community and they can get a lot from it if they are part of it. So like very shortly, this is what I'm doing and yeah. I understand. So uh, writing books is a part of, of what you're doing. And um, I think we come back to that later when we, when we talk about um, what you just mentioned about the, the identity, especially for, for young people. Um, from Romania uh, joins us Zvika Kfir, the rabbi of Timizora. Um, good morning to you, Zvika. And could you tell us a little bit about the town of uh, Timizora and also about your Jewish community there, Zvika? Okay, good morning. Uh, I'm in Israel now. Uh, do the COVID, yes. So you are the, uh, you're, a, uh, you're a happy one. <laughs> yeah, separated from my communities and I have few of them in Romania and few in Israel uh, for more than one year. Uh, talking about the community of Timisoara, the community of Timisoara is the second biggest community in Romania, Jewish community in Romania. Uh, we have around 700 members and the community is Leaded by Dr. Luciana Friedman, that does a fantastic work. Uh, it is a very vivid and active community, and uh, uh, we participated uh, in this project in a very active way. At least we tried. Hopefully, the results are okay. Okay, thank you um, for now. And we are also joined by Anna Label from the city of Split in Croatia. Anna is the president of the Jewish community in Split. Um, Anna, but you grew up in Belgrade, which is now Serbia, and you now live in Split, Croatia. When I was a child, those countries didn't exist on my map. It was all called um, Yugoslavia. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your life and, and, and the Jewish community you are now um, dealing with in Split? Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Speaking of who is where, I'm right now in a rainy Belgrade, um, <laughs> as opposed to the sunny split where I'm not. Um, well, uh, also, and you mentioned that I'm a president of the Jewish community of Split, I'm also 1% uh, of the community, and the community has uh, 100 members. Um, it, Yugoslavia was a very, very specific and special country because we were somewhere in between the East and the West. Uh, so our growing up being Jewish was actually not, maybe it was much better than elsewhere. And Yugoslavia was a bridge between East and West uh, during my growing up. Uh, so we always had Jewish summer camps and all sorts of other activities. Um, right now, uh, I will just switch to split. Um, we are a tiny community, and I would say this is our largest problem uh, because for many activities, we simply don't have a critical mass. We are still a very, very active community and whoever ever visited, which means a lot of people because we are a tourist destination, everyone is amazed at how uh, active and lively our Shabbats are, our Kabbalah Shabbat, I mean Friday evenings, uh, we have many, many activities uh, of all sorts. Uh, well, so that's okay. Let's say that's it quickly. Okay, thank you, Anna. Um, now, the theme for this talk show um, is called the plurality of modern um, Judaism, which is a very broad um, question. We try to, to pin it down to some subtopics and to give it a structure. Um, and for an opening question um, to all of you, um, I thought of what does it mean to be Jewish in our modern society? Um, maybe starting with, with Mirna in, in Berlin, because she's living, as we mentioned, in, in two different countries, living in two different societies as well. Um, how would you um, answer the question, how does it mean to be Jewish 
in one or the other modern society? Well, I, I think I prefer to just like um, uh, talk about what it means to be Jewish or live Jewish in, uh, in, in Berlin, in Germany, because it's, it's, it's where I grew up, you know, right. it's where I'm born. It's, uh, um, and uh, I have like, it, it makes more sense to talk about this right now. Um, I do feel um, that as I'm like part of the so-called third generation, um, this third generation, uh, especially in Germany, um, is um, luckily now filled with many different, uh, um, very many different people from different Jewish backgrounds, meaning um, we have uh, uh, Jewish people from Germany, from West Germany, from East Germany. We have Jewish people who came in the 90s um, from uh, the former Soviet Repub uh, Republic. We have many other Jews coming from the States, uh, from America, from France, um, and especially, of course, from Israel. So it, um, it luckily creates a very multicultural, multi-ethnic multi and uh, multi-traditional way of, of living uh, Judaism. And um, I don't know um, if some of you know, we, we do have like uh, the Jewish Gemeinde, so the Jewish community where you can become a member, but only like um, 90,000 of probably 200,000 Jews living in Germany are members. Um, this is due to the fact that many don't want to become a member there because um, um, they can't relate to the politics of the Jewish com uh, community, of the institution. Um, many have like already created their own Jewish community within their circles um, um, through the different synagogues that are um, often more open to different Jewish faiths and as well to different Jewish backgrounds, meaning uh, paternal Jews, so Jews that come from that uh, have Jewish fathers, non-Jewish mothers, as I, for example, have, Jews that are um, converted. So um, uh, there is simply a more, um, uh, there is a need for more openness um, uh, due to the openness of the third generation. And this need, um, I think, uh, has to be reflected at a certain point in different Jewish institutions. But I must say, I really um, am happy and, and joyful about this very pluralistic and open Jewish life we have in, for example, Berlin right now. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we could take that point and, and go over to to, to, to Tvika. Um, uh, Mirna just told it about a very lively, pluralistic um, community um, from different backgrounds, but also many people who do not want to join a organized um, community how compared to to what your and your daily work and life normally in in, in Timishwara, um, is that the same or is that something completely different is it more a homogeneous um, community you find there I think that we share the same problems all over including Israel but uh, um, talking about uh, Jewish society in the modern uh, in the modern world, we are talking about the same problems that Judaism faced also 2,000 and 3,000 years ago. So nothing actually changed. The main problem is uh, uh, the idea that we can create something new out of the past. Mm. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it doesn't work because the history shows us that all these uh, uh, tests failed during the generations. So uh, progressive and uh, uh, different streams in Judaism usually did not survive more than a century or the most two centuries. We are trying to do our best to keep people connected to the community and uh, to, uh, to provide them the possibility to study and to know what Judaism is all about because not only people outside of the Jewish community don't know nothing about Judaism. Also people that are members, even members uh, of the Jewish community don't know nothing about Judaism. So the main, uh, the main task, the main issue is to uh, provide them the knowledge and the 
the choice is theirs. Everyone can choose for himself or herself for that matter, uh, either to become part of this definition or to stay in the vague definition that may or may not survive for a generation or two. Mm. Linda, you mentioned uh, in your opening statement that it, it is most of your work is about education. Um, do you have uh, made the same experience as Twika just mentioned that there has to be a lot of education being done so that people really know and, and get to know the, the Jewish heritage? Uh, definitely, yes. I think uh, the, the reason we need so much education is because the classic, the, in Judaism, the, the norm in normally, it would be like children learn everything at home. They see Judaism around them, you know, they celebrate the holidays, they, they get it from home. Like, I believe that Judaism is a home-based uh, culture and religion or what, whatever we call it. Today, uh, okay, because of the, the history, uh, they don't get this. Children don't get, uh, they don't get uh, this, this uh, example how to be Jewish from home. So actually the institutions and, uh, and the educational program take it over this role and replace what, what uh, children should learn at home. So we are at the same time, we are uh, their educational uh, institution and the family. It means I'm not only teaching how to, let's say, how to lead a Seder night. I actually lead them a Seder night because they don't have it at home or because they don't know how to do it at home. And the, then the result is that I think uh, uh, it's generally for most European communities that in many cases, children know more about uh, practice uh, Judaism than their parents or their grandparents uh, do. Yeah. And uh, just to, to show you, uh, uh, this is one of my book is what does it mean to be Jewish, right. which is <laughs> which is like exactly what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And and what I have uh, wrote on the on the first sentence I wrote in this book that I'm not gonna give you the answer for this question. So <laughs> don't, don't be disappointed if you read it over and you have more questions than at the beginning of the book, because this is my goal, is that you should, uh, I, you should know what does it mean for you to be Jewish. And for this, you need to learn and you need education. And you are the one who has to, uh, 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 answer to this question and don't accept anyone else to do it because everybody will tell you a different answer and then you will get completely confused and then you realize that okay so <laughs> what the hell is going on and because yes Judaism is a is a religion where you have to uh, uh, decide who you believe and, and you have to answer to your own questions well um, yeah, that, that sounds very interesting. Before we take it to Anna, Zwicker, you just raised your hand. Yeah, you I want to, to add say, something, add something yes, there. Yes, yeah, uh, about what Linda said. Actually, when we are talking about the, the communities nowadays in Europe and in other places, in a way, the community replaces the education that comes naturally from home. Do the problematic situation of, of the Jewish people in the 20th century in Europe. So um, families disappeared or at least uh, were broken, mixed marriages and other things that uh, actually did not uh, uh, allow to each and every child to get what children in Jewish fam families got a century or more ago. So in a way the, com the community replaces or actually should take the responsibility of replacing home in terms of education and more than that. Mm. This diversification, um, Anna, is that something um, that you can, you can say, yes, that's something that I experience in my work and everyday life as well? 
Uh, well, I would certainly agree <clears throat> that communities uh, took over the uh, role of family in terms of education and in the uh, Judaism in general. Uh, I will give you um, the example of Yugoslavia. Okay, as I mentioned, we in our Jewish summer camps and seminars, we used to be exposed to uh, tradition. I would not maybe call it religion, but we knew a lot about uh, also Jewish religion. In the summer camp, we would recreate Shabbats and various uh, holidays and weddings. Now my children got a new level of that sort of education in the Jewish summer camp, mostly in Sarvash, but also in Croatia. And they do know some things, they do know more or different because their education added also blessings of all sorts that we didn't, we were not taught. But what I would uh, emphasize as very, very important is that with the partition of Yugoslavia, uh, we, many people, most people would declare Yugoslav without thinking further. But all of a sudden, every, everyone became something else, like Roman Catholic, Muslim, Serbian Orthodox. So more and more Jews actually declared Jewish. And then the, uh, well, president of Croatia, Tuzman in 91, started all of a sudden greeting uh, all Croatia's Jewish citizens like Happy New Year. And there we had Jews not knowing enough. Their colleagues, their friends, their neighbors would ask them, well, New Year in uh, September, in October. And they realized they couldn't answer their neighbors. And this is when they came looking for knowledge. So the thirst for knowledge was brought to us thanks to this guy who otherwise we didn't like. Uh, and people started asking questions and that was a paradise for educating people. Today, I can say 20, 30, whatever years later, that all our members know much, much, much more than before. They all, they, they even follow Parashat Shavua, which was unthinkable before. Uh, and uh, the point is that I still, we, because uh, when I read the program, it, was, it said whoever is liberal, orthodox, neolog, secular. So I was, um, I was, well, given the title of secular. However, I would say that uh, our secular is traditional with a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can also tell you that we keep kosher style. We do many, many things, despite the fact that we are a secular community. Mm -hmm. So education, yes, but not necessarily religious. What yeah. I find... What I find really interesting about your answers now, because the question I put to you was, how does, what does it mean to be Jewish in our modern society? And um, surprisingly, you were all talking about educating young people, educating um, the younger generation. And that's something our, uh, uh, Myrna mentioned as well in her opening statement. Um, so let me take it to the question, um, if, if Zvika says, well, people are not that educated as they should be about that. Um, uh, Linda said, well, there is no real answer to, to that question, um, what it means to be Jewish. Um, so how can young people um, live their Jewish identity? I, as I understand, the first step has to be the education, but um, how can you get this younger generation involved in a active and lively Jewish um, community, Muna, this is something you mentioned before, which is uh, quite hard. You said like only 90,000 people are really um, encouraged in their local communities and, and uh, about 100. No, no, no. They are like wrong there? member of the institution. All right. And this is very different because um, we have uh, so we have like an, uh, a, a classical institution that is called the Jewish community of Germany, where you can become member and where you have to um, pay a monthly, uh, a monthly rate and then you can uh, be buried, <laughs> buried on a Jewish cemetery and all this shebang. Um, but we have uh, several uh, synagogues that created their own communities 
through um, simply different ways of uh, Jewish faith, Jewish traditions, Jewish culture, like what actually are they like doing? They're educating. We have, for example, the uh, synagogue in Kreuzberg. Now I'm talking about Berlin um, that is very open. And um, um, when they celebrate uh, the, the high holidays, other people are invited as well. So it's like very uh, um, trans cultural fluid and open and so basically and then you have like more conservative uh, uh, synagogues in Charlottenburg and so in like different areas of Berlin I'm talking here about so um, and around these like synagogues certain communities are being created as well um i for example i ju i jump from uh, i jump from one synagogue to another i'm not like uh, connected to just one synagogue in berlin i just like take what i want from like three different synagogues um but as well um do we have of course um, circles like we are connected, especially now the the third and even the fourth generation. We're connected through social media. We like we we do. Um, I had um, I I had like Pesach with uh, with friends, you know, uh, and and I have a, I have a daughter. I brought other friends with their children, so they, they, the children um, like. Um, get to know like um, a Jewish life, um, but I don't. I I think um, and Linda like when it, when you showed the book, I I said like I, I wrote it down immediately. I want to have the book. You need to send me the book because um, it looked. I wrote a children's book as well um, three years ago. So I think it's very interesting. And um, I what I teach my child is uh, that. Um, Judaism is the search for the answer what it means to be Jewish like it is finding out it's like it's going this path it's going back it's going in a different direction and it is asking questions over and over again and it is asking questions as well about what uh, what Jewishness, uh, what Jewishness means, and I think that this is beautiful. And uh, and um, and I'm I'm really opposed to what uh, Zvika said that um, uh, that there uh, it, it, the, the history showed us that it's not working. And uh, so, 200 years ago, um, uh, um, Reform Judaism was created in Germany. Progressive Judaism was created in Germany, and. Um, and that we have um, this as like uh, one of the biggest um, uh, streams of Judaism in America has something to do that it was created in diaspora in in Germany. It's just that most of the uh, progressive and reform Jews simply left before the war, during the war, after the war uh, to the States and created like a, a really huge uh, Jewish stream that is very strong there now um so i absolutely oppose it it would mean what you said would mean there is no development but there is development all the time <laughs> so you can't stop development um and uh yeah i will answer of course uh, with your permission uh there is a difference a huge difference i know that you don't agree with me but that's that's legal because we have pluralism in judaism and everyone is, is entitled to express his or her opinion, as long as we don't redefine Judaism. Because Judaism survived for 3,000 and more years because of its definition. Even Jewish communities uh, uh, spreaded all over. And even one family here, one family there, Jewish people survived due to the fact that the definition did not change from one community to the other. Questions, debates, uh, disagreements existed in Judaism all over the history. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the big definition of Judaism could not have changed because we know, we know, what, we, what, what was created from Judaism that changed the definition. Christianity. Christianity actually came from Judaism by changing few of the definitions of Judaism. And it, it, it is a huge success, but it, not, it is not Judaism anymore. I'm talking about Judaism. I'm not talking about creating something new as 
fantastic, nice, uh, uh, and and enjoyable it, as it may be, it is not Judaism. We have this definition, and I'm not talking about the strict orthodox definition of Judaism. I'm talking about the philosophy uh, uh, point of view upon Judaism. And the philosophy, as you studied philosophy, I also uh, studied the philosophy in, in Barilana and Tel Aviv University and also Jewish philosophy, and I deal with that a lot. But the philosophical definition of Judaism did not change. We accept um, pluralism, but we don't change the definition. So we, I talk too much. Um, so we could just, um, I, was saw, I saw Linda shaking her head and Anna yeah, yeah. raising her hand. So yeah, okay, Linda, that's, that's okay. To you. We all, we uh, were, all those three women were like, <laughs> we had like this posture. What okay, you Linda, <laughs> Linda you, you, were, you were shaking your head. What was the point you, you would disagree in? That, uh, I, when I teach, I always uh, say that, okay, let's find only one thing in Judaism, not many, just one that every Jew agree. <laughs> Tell me one thing. You won't no. find it. And I don't know what is this. Uh, okay, uh, we just, I don't think, you know, that, uh, that, that what you say, uh, that, that Judaism did change, has changed a lot. It, it, it changed, like, Evolved. after, after Evolved. destroying the, the temples, it, it became a completely different Evolved. religion. And even the basic philosophical ideas were destroyed and they rebuilt a completely new one. It's not true that we live the same Judaism like 3000 years. It's not true. You know, to, today what you, you, who you, you agree that somebody is Jewish, whose mother is Jewish, 2000 years ago, it was the father. It was not what exactly. Was For 3780 years, you were, you were Jewish through I your father. And then there's something changed. I completely, you know? I completely agree. But the way that Judaism functions is brick on brick. You don't destroy the bricks on the bottom in order to build the wall. It's, it's like, it's like a, you Nobody know. Nobody is touching the foundation. Who is touching the foundation is there. We are not opposing the foundation. And, and what is the foundation? The... the foundation should be there is one God. 50% of no, Jews No, 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 no. We God. are not talking about like... God. Sorry, sorry. Hold on, Judaism maybe... does not talk we... about God. Judaism talks about practical things. The definition of the laws of Judaism, 613 laws hold on, and hold their on. evolution. Just, just to okay. give it a short structure. Um, Anna, it was your turn now. If you could, if you wanted to add something there, I thought you were interrupted there. Um, yes, I wanted to add it, uh, an example of uh, various countries, large countries, and also like uh, Mirna mentioned Berlin, where you have pluralism, where you have uh, the actual choice of denomination. Uh, it doesn't make sense, for example, in many Eastern European countries, you can, your only choice is orthodox or secular. When uh, to our community, when we get visiting uh, rabbis of all sorts, of all denominations, including women rabbis, our members like, wow, what is that? Because all they get are Orthodox rabbis in Croatia, in Serbia, in Bosnia, uh, there is no choice. So the question is whether by giving people more choice, you might get more, what we would say, religious people, people who belong to one denomination or you just uh, turn them out or down by offering only Orthodox because in Croatia, most of people are secular because they don't have a choice the way they have in Hungary or Germany. Uh, so what does it mean in terms of what you just proposed? Okay. By the way, my father was born in, in Yugoslavia, in Ilok. Yeah. Uh, and talking about what you mentioned, uh, as all the members of, of my communities know, I'm a very open-minded person and a very open-minded rabbi. I never judge people. I'm talking, no, no. What I was saying before was from the point of view of definition of Judaism. Many years ago, I have a farm in Israel and I had an employee. She was a French woman that converted to Judaism and adopted five uh, uh, retarded children, 
Down uh, 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 syndrome. She was a right. Did, in sorry, and, did she convert in an orthodox manner? Yes, 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 definitely. She she lived in Israel. One day she came to work in the morning, and it was Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av is a fasting day. Okay, people don't eat in Tisha B'Av according to the strict laws of Judaism, but most people, of course, do. And she was she didn't see me, and she was a secular person. She was a secular person. She. She had a, 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 a sandwich in her hand and she was talking to herself and she said, it's Tisha B'Av and I'm going and, and I'm about to eat. I think that this is the definition of Judaism, being aware to the frame of Judaism and make your own choice without, without judgment, without judgment. But don't break the, the, the definition just because you don't like it. Do whatever you want, but agree that these things exist. But I have my way in this in this frame. Uh, uh, Mirna, you were right that uh, the definition of Judaism was after the father, uh, two thousand and less, by the way, yes. years ago. Yes, yes, and I totally agree that we should reconsider these things nowadays. But unfortunately, people they have to are be reconsidered not, because people but, feel, especially in diaspora, and not even only I in the Jewish totally diaspora. Agree. I face this problem. I, in I Israel, this problem. in Israel, it's a huge problem, and they need to figure I it know. out as soon as possible. Because how, because I of know. the law of return, half a million are not halachically Jewish in Israel, and it's just seven million people, and just like can, and it needs to be figured out because it doesn't make any kind of sense. But these these things need to be talked. Um, uh, uh, talk through uh, because um, you will lose. You will lose young. Not you, people. we. Not you, we. That's yeah. that's that's we my definition. Lose, <laughs> we will lose. We will lose younger generations, and uh, um, we will lose them. Uh, I to... totally agree, and I think that that a move should be taken. Unfortunately, most rabbis are not open-minded, and most of them are afraid that their image will be infected by this move that they will take or where if they will express other opinions but the mainstream streams opinions. And that's the main problem in Judaism nowadays, by the way, that may be created by those uh, progressive uh, streams that threatens uh, the, the mainstream of Judaism. Uh, uh, I don't see the reason for that, but this is the, the way people think. I sure believe and I, I stand behind, behind that as, as a rabbi also, that a move should be taken and people like you should be recognized in a way in the frame of Judaism because we are going to lose many people and it's not for the benefit of the people of Israel and also for it, it, it will be a very big loss for the Jewish culture as well. So Okay, um, Zvika, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, just let me interrupt you at that point um, because um, we want to get what, what, what we find out now. There are some things we have to agree that we don't, we, that, that we disagree at some point. Of course. Um, but um, that is what we wanted, a lively discussion. So thank you for that already. And just let me mention for all the other viewers, uh, again, um, you can ask your questions as well. Um, you can find a Q&A button down on your screen or it says F&A or Q&A. You can write down your questions during the discussion to the points we were just mentioning and we will mention in the future now. Um, and we will come back to your questions um, later on before we, we end up that talk show. Um, and you just some, said something, Twika, that um, brings us to the next point I want to talk to you about is what kind of challenges do the Jewish communities currently face across Europe? Um, Mirna also just said, well, there mentioned some points where um, in her opinion, we have to work on so that we don't lose uh, these younger people. We also talked about younger people. Um, Linda, maybe start off that point with you. Um, what do you think, what are the, uh, what kind of challenges do the Jewish communities face across Europe from your perspective, maybe from your daily work and life? A I think that the number one challenge is to recognize the fact that uh, Jewish communities are not centralized anymore around synagogues. 
So, uh, and uh, it means that there are like institutions and NGOs and JCCs, and, and we have this uh, amazing Sarvash camp in Hungary that really had a big impact on the, the Jewish identity of already like the second generation of children who, who went to Sarvash. I think none of the synagogues can have such a strong uh, impact on, on, on Jewish life than a, than a fun two weeks in a Sarvash or any other Jewish Sarva, uh, uh, summer camp. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and and I, I think it, it, it is very important not to streak to this fact that, that maybe 100 years ago, communities were built around synagogues. That was like the, the center. And I'm not against synagogues. My husband is a rabbi. <laughs> so believe me, I'm not, perfect. I'm not talking against synagogues, but they are not the number one source of Jewish experience today. And, and I think uh, it looks like it takes some time to, to the federation, to the Jewish official federations who were like uh, the, the main leaders of, of uh, the Jewish life uh, that uh, it takes some time for them to, to, to recognize that fact. Anna, you were, you were shaking, you were nodding and, and pointing thumbs up for what Linda just said. Um, uh, but so I, I, I see that you, you agree with her um, uh, answer, but how can that be, how can that be changed in your point of view? The change is already on its way. It is changing. The change already uh, started many years ago, I guess. Uh, I don't want to go into politics, like what, what should be done and what the, the federation, the official community federations are not modern thing led by not so open-minded people, let's say that way. Uh, um, but, but fortunately, it doesn't stop all the, the small organizations and NGOs and camps. And, and I'm leading a, a, a youth organization called BBYO, which is a, a international organization focuses specifically for teenagers. And uh, I've been doing it for many years in, in Hungary. And you know, nobody stops me. I don't care if they don't agree with me. I don't care if they don't agree with the, the fact that I consider uh, you know, everyone welcome and, and Jewish, and I'm not searching for papers because I'm a youth organization, thanks God, and not a rabbi like my husband. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that, that's, that, that, that's the, the key point that uh, don't let us, uh, you know, that negative feedback, so like say, I, I don't think it's okay what you're doing, fine, then don't come. Yeah. Um... Um, Trika and, and Mirna, I will be with you in a second. Um, Anna just um, uh, nodded and, and agreed. Uh, do, you, do you have like? Do you think that the, the change is on their way, like like Linda um, mentioned? Well, I would agree with Linda. The changes are already here. Uh, it's they are, of course, unfortunately, they are coming more and more, but they are already here. Uh, and I will just say, from uh, my point of view. Uh, our circumstances are such that uh, actually uh, it also has something to do with antisemitism as one of the challenges is being open versus being closed. Uh, a lot of our uh, uh, energy is devoted to being open and to organizing educational programs for non-Jews involving Jews and our members of the community in those educational programs for non-Jews. So I would say that uh, also like synagogue is a center in terms of bringing non-Jews into it, asking uh, uh, questions, school children coming. Um, we are organizing educational programs at the cemetery. We are organizing uh, open door days. Uh, so it's mostly, in my opinion, culture, education, and uh, giving that to our uh, members through enabling them to educate others. So they feel mm -hmm. that they are doing something. Like, so obviously, they have to 
also think about their knowledge in order to transmit it to the others. So I would say that uh, that is also good against anti-Semitism, but a lot of interfaith, a lot of open, and a lot of um, programs for, for public uh, together with the, our members. In our case, that's, that's the main challenge and that's the road because we are very small and we are facing all sorts of, of challenges coming from the outside. Hmm. Now, Zika, you wanted to add something there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I, uh, I agree also with Linda that the synagogue is no longer the central center of the community, and that's okay, and that's okay. I don't have any problem with that. We are, we are doing many activities uh, because Judaism is actually a combination between two things, culture and religion. You cannot separate them because they are mixed together, but I totally agree that uh, uh, one should start emphasizing on the cultural things in order to embrace the people of the community. And uh, we see that many people are coming uh, after the prayer for Onik Shabbat Friday evening and the meal is important. And I don't care about that because as long as people are coming, as long as people communicate, collaborate, and sitting together and doing things together, they are a community. And that's the definition of a community. Maybe 200 years ago or more, uh, the importance of the synagogue was much higher than today. And I, I'm not blind, I see how, how things are working nowadays. Uh, I don't want to lose members of the community. I don't want to lose people like Mirna, I want to embrace, embrace everyone. No, really, I, I mean it. I want to embrace everyone uh, because we are one nation, one culture, and we need to have also this connection. I didn't say that this is the center, but we need to have also uh, some connection to our past, to our uh, religion, even if we are secular people. That's mm -hmm. legal, yeah. that's, that's okay, that's okay. Yeah. Um before I take it to Mirna, um, we just got a question in from, well, it's not, rather not a question, but um, um, uh, something that we were just talking about. So I will read it out to you. Um, we just got that in from, from the UK at Horridge writes, the issue of uh, synagogues no longer being the center of Jewish life is also present in the UK. The emphasis is now shifting to Jewish centers, which encourage all aspects of Jewish life, education and so on, and which also includes the synagogues as part of it. Uh, Myrna, would you describe that for, for Berlin and Germany for, uh, uh, similarly? Um, I, I was thinking about it uh, a lot while, while Linda was speaking, because uh, uh, prior I mentioned that uh, uh, many communities uh, are circling around a synagogue. So I, I would say that in Berlin, um, there, there are communities being created around synagogues, people who meet each other over and over again at the synagogue, celebrating together as well. I, I said that, uh, but people are not just like going to one synagogue, uh, but maybe going for, for example, like I go to sh for children Shabbat, it's just like a special thing. I go to this synagogue for Rosh Hashanah, I want to go to this synagogue to have more fun, you know, so it's like, uh, um, but as well, um, uh, um, uh, people are going like we have the same we have institutions like the ZVST for example that does uh, all these like summer youth camps and um, uh, so I in, in Germany um, luckily to the uh, 90s uh, and all those like um, um, uh, Jews coming from uh, the former Soviet Republic and all those other states you know that uh, we have now a critical, kind of like a critical mass where there can be again, uh, something like um, new Jewish communities being created uh, around themselves, new ways of living and, and, and as well, children and, and youth being educated 
um, through institutions. So there are very there are very many different layers right now, um, and uh, and this has something to do with the critical mass we have right now of of around like two hundred thousand Jews. For example, the Israelis, like we have around 30,000 Israelis in Berlin. Um, so they bring a very different way. And this interesting thing, when they didn't go to synagogue in Israel, they go to synagogue now in Berlin because yeah. it's their only chance to live there, like kind of like Judaism. Um, uh, and so this is a new development as well. You know, they, they, they didn't go there. And now they go in Berlin and they're like, what am I doing in the synagogue? But it's fun, you know? So um, I think it's, um, I think it's nice. I really think it's nice. And I, and it looks very flourishing. And uh, of course, we have all this like anti-Semitism questions about and discussions about anti-Semitism. But I really think um, um, it should be uh, it should be a goal to um, as well start after 78 years, 75 years now to actually just like talk about Judaism, uh, talk about like how Judaism can now relate to the to new society, ask questions how Judaism need to adopt to new societies like uh, um, uh, like queerness and all these like and we. We have to stop just identifying ourselves through the Shoah and, and anti-Semitism. We have to now start like getting back into like text and thinking about Jewish philosophy and like building something out of these questions and not only by the uh, by the giving identities from from the outside, you know, and the questions the outside race and the problems the outside race, but uh, as well like like starting again um, in the uh, um, answering these questions in the inside. Mm -hmm. um, Trika, I think you you wanted to to add yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. First, first, I envy Mirna for living in Berlin because it is a fantastic place that uh, that can be presented as a, as a test case for innovation and other things, including uh, Judaism, uh, for that matter. Uh, but I wanted to ask you a question. You said that you, you visit different synagogues. Do you define yourself as a member of one of the communities or none whatsoever? I like, I'm obviously not allowed to become an official member. No, 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 not ah. officially, not officially. What do you feel? Do you feel- Of course powerful? I'm a member of the community. Which one? Of my of the community of the of global the... one of the yeah okay 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 that's that's Berlin for sure <laughs> no doubt yeah, about it, it and 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 we it's I'm not like I'm I'm uh, I wouldn't say I'm like a member of a community around a synagogue but it's more like a circle of friends that know each other that are like 50 100 people 200 people that like know each other and uh, and we we share our lives we share the high holidays we go there so it's more um it's not rigid it's fluid exactly I understand. like, uh, I totally like understand. life is now you know it's uh we travel around we have different uh, um uh, uh ways of identifying ourselves so I think it's it's the flu, flu, fluidity of uh, of the postmodern world of the world we're living right now in is as as well be shown in the way uh, Jews are living their uh, Jewishness from like the third and the fourth generation. I totally agree, but the situation in Berlin is totally different than absolutely. In Europe. I'm not saying this is like this is how Europe is. We all know it, it can't uh, uh, after uh, after the Second World War and the Holocaust. But um, I do think it's a uh, it's uh, yeah. Berlin Berlin is a is a is a lucky place. It's, it's an isolate, isolated isolated yeah. island, also in Germany. Also in Germany, absolutely, absolutely. In a way, in a way, in a way, it is. Anna, Anna was just just shaking her head. What are your experiences? Well, first of all, I traveled around Germany and I found so many things in so many different cities. Of course, Berlin is different, but uh, in Croatia, you really cannot get all that. And we are very far from 
being uh, in the position of returning to texts and returning to ourselves and returning to the in internal thing. And we do have to act, as I mentioned, externally being open uh, and using that as an opportunity also to strengthen ourselves through uh, giving Judaism to the others. We are very, very far from, from the, the opportunity of devoting, uh, you know, going through texts, as you mentioned. And as Trika said, you are lucky to, to be in Berlin and uh, it's, it's a fascinating place. Uh, however, what is our main thing is to keep in touch with other communities, to send our youngsters to wherever we can uh, to, to, to feel a part of the world. So when it comes to certain places that are not as fortunate as Berlin, uh, the only way is actually sending our, not only youngsters, but going to all sorts of gatherings. And of course, it's about Judaism. It's uh, everywhere we go to, there is Shabbat, there is this, and there is that. Uh, also, when it comes to synagogue, sometimes it's also a question of how the place is organized. In places where synagogue is separate from the community is very different than when you have community and the synagogue in the same building or so yeah um yeah i don't know which if i answered leads, anything but yeah yeah which leads me to like uh, let's say uh, another point where we wanted to talk about is um jewish heritage and present day and how to draw bridges um you all for mention it how how you would answer maybe con concentrate a little bit out on that because that was also this the, this program about it was called rediscover so um how do you how do you think can could be appropriate way to to draw those those bridges from the jewish heritage to the present day of course there are different answers um from different point of views and also as we just now learned from different places you were living. Anna just mentioned you can't compare Berlin to Split, for, for, for instance. Um, maybe um, uh, we could to, uh, start again with, with Linda. Um, how do you, you also talked about that earlier on uh, with your uh, work as, uh, with young people, uh, also as an author. Um, how do you think uh, can those um, bridges be drawn from heritage to present day to include a, a maximum of, 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 of Jewish people. Sorry, can I just ask Linda, how large is your community or the synagogue? I, sure, uh, our, yeah, it's like how, when, when we talk about sizes of community, usually I try, I start to explain the, the you know, the size of the building, because this is a fact. <laughs> like how big is our synagogue but the, like members I mean it's it's very we have like 400 seats in the synagogue if it it, it is located on the Buddha side of uh, of uh, Budapest and we are a neologue synagogue and let's not go into this story what is neologue this this stream of Judaism that has formed only has been formed only in in Hungary and it, it doesn't fit to any of the mainstreams of uh, Judaism, but like uh, this is the mainstream here in Hungary. Actually so it does. Uh, it, it, it is like the conservatives. But it's not because we are not, not egalitarian. Not. The conservatives, the conservatives are uh, an evolution of, of the neolog in a way. Yeah, but but they don't. Uh, we don't belong there because we are not egalitarian. So women are not. Uh, counted and and uh, so there are big differences but we are somewhere in the middle of conservative and modern orthodox mm -hmm. but or let's say this way the rabbi is modern orthodox and the the the, the community is somewhere between reform and secular <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Some, somewhere in between <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's uh but uh Yes, I mean heritage is 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 a thing that uh, you know I don't start with it uh, when I talk to the kids, but I include it. I think in every every program we make, and we we try to give them heritage with some some uh, Yiddish Kate, what we we call it, like that they get unnaturally from us and not from their home, and. Um, my, my goal is, uh, 
one of the, the things that bothers me a lot about heritage is the tourists in, in, in Budapest. Most tourists come here for like three days because this is like a three days city like Budapest. You see the three days, it's enough. No, it's and, more. And you, it, need more. you need more. <laughs> I, I know, Definitely. but in three days and they come here and they want to see the Jewish Budapest and, and they, they see all the memorials or the Holocaust memorials or the empty synagogues and they leave Budapest without seeing a living Jew. If they are not coming with the organized group who like arrange them a meeting with the local people, you know, voluntary thing, then you, if you just come here as a tourist and you, you see this, this heritage, what we have here, which is huge, but they are like, they visit Budapest, they, they consider it a huge cemetery or it's like a huge Yad Vashem museum, you know? And it hurts so much because they don't really see the, the living Jewish life we have here. But how, but how can that be changed? Like, how can we, um, uh, how can that be, how can, can like, I, I agree with Svika, I, I was there for three days only and I haven't seen <laughs> a lot, but uh, in Budapest, but uh, so I promised to come back, but um, how can, how can you, can that be organized to really, to, to see and visit, like to see that, that lively Jewish life you, you were talking about? But we have the, sorry, we have the same problem in, in Germany. This is like, we have the same problem in Germany that most of the Ger non-Jewish Germans are just like thinking about dead Jews or um, the Holocaust. And there is no, uh, there is no, no knowledge of Judaism whatsoever. We are right now celebrating 1,700 years of um, of Jews on the foil of uh, of Germany. But if you ask Germans, non-Jewish Germans, about um, um, uh, like the the most basic questions, they couldn't answer it. So um, and the and the the question over the I think like past five years, especially in the Jewish communities, was like. Why are we like, why are we silenced? Why are Jews being silenced? Why is no one being interested in living Jews? In Germany, it's a very complicated and complex thing. I will, won't be able to like um, I, I, I elaborate on that for the next five minutes, but um, the only, uh, the chance, and I do think the responsibility lays not on the Jewish side. It's like on the other side being actually interested in um, in living uh, in living Jews in, uh, uh, in in Judaism that exists and that uh, it has not just something to do with the Holocaust and there is like a big big discrepancies um, towards the non-Jewish side and the Jewish side and um, for example this talk show you talked about I mean that basically a Jewish producer and a Jewish actor had to create a talk show in order to make a Jewish talk show to invite Jews so other people can actually see real living Jews. It has to do with the fact that for the last 75 years, we have not been invited when they talk in, in the media about anti-Semitism or anything like that. It's just like being talked um, above them. There is no Jews being invited to talk about their Jewish topics. So we had to create, they had to create a show in order so we can like basically start speaking about our own Jewishness, you know? So um, uh, these problems, um, uh, they, they have to be faced. And I do think what the Jewish communities can do is say, listen, this problem that you don't know Jews, that you don't know anything about Judaism, that lies on your side. You need to educate yourself mm -hmm. um, and we can help you, but um, it's not our responsibility all the time uh, to, to do this. Okay, um, because I just have one hour, uh, one eye on our clock. We've only got four or five minutes remaining until eleven. I just want to take it to Anna and Zvika in, in that order because Anna, you were just just uh, shaking your head. What what Myrna just said? Um, how how was your um, answer to to the question to draw those bridges? Well, I, I would say that in Croatia we are very much present as mm -hmm. Jews, as living Jews, and uh, but I would say 
or I have to say that it's on both sides. I would never say that it's not our thing to uh, be more present. Uh, it, it has to be mutual. It has to come from two sides. Uh, so we are both invited and we invite. Um, we are present in whoever visits, get somebody, living person to talk to. Uh, we they keep calling us media keeps calling us all the time and we have to reject them and it's the the on all sorts of topics uh including heritage in the case of split very much because it is a roman emperor's uh, diocletian's palace we are the unesco site so it is slightly different in split of course because we it's a living heritage altogether including jewish heritage so mm -hmm. i i have to disagree that uh, if we keep rejecting the, them, uh, they will not have us. If uh, they stop calling us, they will not have us. So it has to be from both sides. But I didn't say it's about rejecting. And I think that it's important to understand that there is a different um, uh, a different thing between... It, it, it's different in Germany. It's, it's the... There is a historical reason, <laughs> you know, um, you that the there, same one. Don't worry. That there is like a very, very um, odd pathological dynamic, um, and uh, so this is. I was speaking solely about what the the problems and the discussions in Germany are. Like I, I would not talk about any other country in in okay. Europe, as I don't know. Yeah. So um, I won't not let you go without uh, Zvika and his answer to that to that question. Uh, and maybe to sum it up, Zvika, how how is your answer or how is your idea to draw those bridges? Okay. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say to both Linda and Mirna that your problems are the problems of the rich people, since in Berlin one of the most uh, famous uh, uh, tourist attractions is the, the Jewish Museum, and uh, uh, you have. Jewish life in, in Budapest. And as I know, many tourists are visiting uh, the Dohani uh, synagogue and they see that Jewish life exists. Then you have so many restaurants all over, maybe it's not as much as you want. But the Dohani synagogue is always empty. They don't see Jews there. They don't see a service there. They don't yeah, see yeah, yeah. I said I said your problems is uh, your problems are the problems of the rich people because you won't know but most communities and most places don't have even these elementary things that can be uh, shown to others what are my my, my answer to to your question uh, Matthias is that a living and active open Jewish community can contribute to the communication between uh, uh, the Jewish community and the local other communities, as we are doing in, in, in different places. We participate in, in meetings with the head of the churches. Uh, we uh, invite them, they invite us. We, uh, we share ideas, uh, we uh, talk to people, we open uh, sessions to non-Jewish people as uh, for Jewish people. We open the, uh, the classes, the studies of a Parashat Shavua to everyone, whoever wants to hear, uh, can come, study, understand. We don't try to force people to convert. On the contrary, we don't want them to convert. We just express our points of view upon things in order that the rest of the population in the place that surrounds the Jewish community will understand who we are and and uh, and and will be able to see that we can we can live together and communicate and to see also the contribution that we actually gave to the local um, cultural uh, society well um let me let me tell you that um, I, I said like an hour ago that we will have a, a very interesting discussion with four interesting people from four different backgrounds and from different countries and 
that's exactly what we just had now over the last 60 minutes. So um, I have to have an eye on, on the clock. And as, as it turns 11 o'clock now, we have to, to uh, stop it here. But let me tell you, Anna, Linda, Mirna and Zvika, thank you very much um, for, for your um, uh, very lively discussion. And I think we, 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 we found out that um, there are different answers to the same questions at different uh, uh, po points in Europe or the world. Uh, and uh, thank you for, for sharing your thoughts and your, um, and your uh, experiences uh, for that. So thank you to all of you and I hope you stay with us for the rest of this day. Thank you a lot. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, thank bye. you. It was really nice to meet you all. Thank you.